Uh, Blaine, uh, can you do some name dropping on some of the uh, famous Toronto clubs that you've played? Well, let me think. Uh, I guess the Alma Combo is the one that most people know about. Um, I played there a couple of times uh, with, uh, with uh, some uh, some people, and uh, was lucky enough to uh, share the stage with um, Amy Sky and uh, Alan Frew from Glass Tiger. Um, um, there was also um, Rich Dodson from a group called the Stampeders that some people might have remembered. Um, I've also um, played in uh, uh, the Cadillac Lounge. We did a, uh, a Jerry Lee night at that place and uh, that went over really well. Uh, played in uh, graffitis and other places uh, that a lot of people drop in to. Uh, um, a few other um, pubs in the area that um, some people might have remembered, Stonecutter's Lounge, uh, which I think was uh, made famous in a rock and roll song um, by uh, it was Tom Cochran, if I remember. Um, I've also played with uh, Ralph Cole uh, from Lighthouse. We've jammed a few times. Uh, um, shared a few licks with uh, one of the uh, judges of uh, the Canadian Idol, um, Zach Werner, who was an interesting guy. <laughs> no, I knew no. him before he was doing that yeah. show. Is he? Is he? Is that just a shtick, or is he that much of a prick? Well, I, I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's an interesting guy. He's actually he's a very nice man. Uh, but uh, he, uh, I mean, he was a guy who went through uh, the rock and roll mill and got to the point where they told him basically, look, you're not going to be a big star. And um, his um, his uh, shtick is now he's letting other people know if he thinks they will be a big star or if not. And he's uh, just very blunt and uh, mind you, he's doing pretty well. He's pretty well known now compared to what he was when he was uh, playing rock and roll. So you can't argue with success. Uh, Blaine, can you tell me some of your uh, uh, funny uh, gig stories, uh, both low points and uh, high points? Well, um, I think uh, some of the one of, one of the uh, stories that um, I don't know anybody, even the uh, even the uh, professionals from the old band, who beat this story. But uh, one of our uh, one of our first uh, gigs with uh, the, the the Flashback Band was to play at. <laughs> Uh, a, um, a, a nudist resort, naturist resort as they call it, but basically it's a, a resort of naked people. Uh, we had to um, entertain them and also be exposed to them. <laughs> we did not play naked, um, although we were invited to, but I'm not plugging into equipment and then playing naked on a, on a stage, thanks. And so uh, we um, had the, uh, um, the opportunity to try to remember everything we were playing while watching all these naked people jumping around and dancing up and down and uh, as much as you may think this might be really uh, titillating it's sort of like looking at a, uh, a subway stop full of people naked that's about the uh, that's about the average uh, um, naturist uh, so when they were uh, when they were dancing around I don't know what was worse the uh, the uh, fast dancing or the slow dancing <laughs> but uh, we did that for actually a, a few years, and uh, it's uh, it got us a lot of uh, a lot of uh, interesting comments. But, uh, studio. It was, and, uh, it was know, possibly the importance of the home studio to an independent musician uh, nowadays. I I think they are the best um, device. Um, it used to be that you would have to spend thousands of dollars for um, some of the mixing equipment and effects and um, track devices that you can record with now. Um, now for a few hundred dollars you can have all that in your house and I am taking advantage of that uh, and I'm uh, putting together my own material. I originally did it for uh, the purpose of playing it for my band so we could perhaps uh, do some of my original material but I found that it's a really interesting way of getting feedback. You put together your own songs which I know other people are doing on the uh, on the uh, internet radio, and you can post them up for other people to listen to, other musicians, other uh, people interested in your music, and they will tell you and send you uh, messages how they like it. Uh, you can tell by what the plays are, which ones are the most popular, and um, I think that it's a great way to uh, get your word out without having to be, uh, let's say, uh, you don't have to be a 21-year-old uh, fashion model to be in uh, to be in music. You can uh, put your music out and let it be the uh, let it. Uh, make the decision as to how uh, you're received by the public.
now many people think being a musician is rather glamorous but it could be a hazard a hazard to one's health am I out of line there yeah we played a few rough places we played this this one place that is actually still going in Guelph believe it or not it's called the diplomat hotel is the name of it they call it the dip the infamous dip and it's it's one of the places where they didn't put up chicken wire because somebody would probably steal it but it's so rough in that place we would rarely get out of there without seeing a fight happen sometime during the night and I remember this one particular night where two girls got into it and they literally went from one end of the bar room to the other I had a tower speaker in those days we were using tower speakers I had a tower speaker in front of me and I was hanging on to it to keep it from being tipped over but also so that in case they threw a chair and I had something to protect myself they went all the way through the bar room onto the pool table and right out the back door um, it, was the, it was the wildest thing I ever saw but uh, uh, it always happened in those places uh, something would happen during the night and if you were playing you just kept playing and if you weren't playing you just waited till it was over and let the uh, bar people take care of it. Blaine, what are your uh, musical influences? Well, if anybody's heard me, they know I sound uh, somewhat like Jerry Lee Lewis, and uh, he was a, a big influence on me. Uh, but there's there's other people too. Um, Jane Basie, who played with uh, uh, the Downchild Blues Band, <clears throat> she passed away back in the 80s. I met her in the uh, late 70s and, and got a chance to talk to her about playing. And uh, if anybody knows the history of that band, uh, they were the influence of the uh, uh, Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi for the Blues Brothers. Tell me about uh, your experience meeting Robert Gordon. Robert Gordon, um, he was at the Cadillac Lounge playing, and uh, I, uh, I went to see him, and uh, yeah, he did a good show. Uh, and uh, then they said afterwards, oh, if you stay around, uh, Robert, Robert's going to come down. So I thought, oh, okay. So I stuck around, stuck around. He came down and uh, with his band, and we were talking away, and he, he, signed, uh, he signed a CD for me, and uh, he seemed a little... Uh, uh, he seemed, didn't seem quite the same guy as when he was uh, getting his big hits back in the old days, but I guess all those years on the road. Uh, uh, his, uh, his, they, were, they were telling me about how uh, when uh, he was playing with uh, Danny Gatton, Danny Gatton used to have a... Uh, Who committed suicide. Yeah, that's right. Um, he was a, but he was a great Telecaster player, but he had, a, uh, he had a suicide switch on his amplifier. And they said if he ever got to the point where he just didn't want to play anymore, or he decided he'd had enough, he could hit this switch on his guitar and it literally short-circuited out his amplifier and would blow half the stage out at the same time. So if he ever got into a mess where he thought maybe he was a little bit over his head, I don't know where, but uh, I thought that was an interesting story. What do you think of the internet radio? I think it's great. I think it's uh, for, for people who want to uh, put their work up on the site just for uh, people to listen to, other musicians. Um, I think it's great and I think it's a terrific way to uh, get your name out. Um, people seem to be all worried about piracy and so on, but you know what, if you want to put a demonstrator song out, what better way to get a worldwide audience than to uh, put it on the internet radio. So, I'm all for it. Well now you look quite a sight, your checkerboard shirt and boots so bright. You better turn them around before you enter this bar room, friend. This place ain't for the week of heart, and the spot's always dim and dark. Black's the only dress code here, this bar is strictly packed. Take the music here, I 
bar. We had a jukebox full of art. Tells the story of who we are in this bar of sprinkling past. It tells the story of who we are in this bar of sprinkling past.